All right, guys, so I've just got off at Tarpa Chan Ferry Crossing, directly opposite Wang Lang, my favorite market, as you know, in Bangkok. Also, we're just around the corner from the Grand Palace. So for everyone that's been asking me where to eat around the Grand Palace, I'm going to show you today. I'm going to be checking out an 80-year-old roti matabak shop. And I heard uncle might even let me make one of my own. So for all of you that say roaming cook doesn't cook, let's go. Okay guys, but before I go any further with the video, I just want to thank the sponsor of today's video, Amar Amar. Thank you so much for your generous support of the channel. I couldn't do this without you. So today's video, Amar Amar is for you. Mwah. He's gonna try and sell mine for even more money. Such a good one. <laughs> All right, guys, so this is the final product. This isn't the one that I flipped, obviously. This is the one that uh, Lung Lan flipped, Uncle Lan. Crispy, flaky. We got some spring onions, some coriander, cilantro. We've got some fried onions, a bit of chicken breast, that crispy, flaky, oh, delicious looking. Mataba. Mm. Right, and the first thing you get him is the fried onions. Just sweet and almost caramelized. Loads and loads of turmeric. You got that spring onion, coriander. A little bit of cumin. And chunks of chicken, whereas I'm used to getting like minced up pieces of chicken. Mm. No wonder Uncle's been around for 80 years. All right, now for the ajak, which is just cucumber, chilies, red onion, sugar and vinegar. Sweet, but, oh, it's nice. It's sweet and sour. I'll grab a little bit with the matabak. Mm. Very good. All right, so while I'm waiting for my beef one, I might as well tell you a little bit more about this place and the surrounding area. So this uh, Tapa Chan, which is the pier that we're at, is actually famous for being an amulet market, a Thai amulet market, which I'll show you in a sec. They also sell antiques and books and stuff like that. And we're right out the back of Tamasat University, which is one of the main universities in Bangkok. So as you would imagine, there's a lot of students coming here so the prices are very very affordable because obviously they serve students who need it to be affordable now this lady's cracking me up this lady's killing me right there, there could not be 
more of a contrast between the lady here and the uncle, right? I don't know if they're related. I think they are. I think she's his daughter. But he is like the happiest guy you've ever seen in your life. Like you just saw, he let me go back and flip a Rotti, um, uh, happy as Larry. And she is the one of the most miserable people I've ever met, I think. I don't want to be rude either, but she's very, very miserable. I don't know if that's just her shtick or what, but um, I'm pretty sure they're the same they're the same shop, like he does the matabak and she does the hoid hard. They also sell hoid hard, so mussel and oyster pancakes. So I've just kind of assumed that you know what a matabak is, haven't I? I haven't really explained it to you. So it's basically, it's a roti, so it's a, a bread. A lot of people call them pancakes in Thailand, you know, like banana pancakes, but they're not. It's, a, it's just a wheat flour, oil, salt and a little bit of sugar rolled up into a ball and then flipped. As you saw, I can flip roti better than most. Um, and yeah, it's basically just a stuffed roti. So if you've had a uh, roti chennai, um, it's basically that, but stuffed and then fried. All right, so let's talk about the shop. Now this place is right up my soy, so to speak. We're down like a dingy little back alley um, in the pier. The shop is proper, proper old school. It's 80 years old, as I said before. And I think 80 years ago was the last time they decorated. They've got a few different things in here. We've got spring rolls, which are very, very famous and very, very popular, I'm told, with the student population. As I said, you've got the Huayt Hard. They also do Cafe Boran and Cha Yen Thai. So they've got like original recipe coffee and tea. So Thai teas and Boran means ancient. That just escapes me for a second, ancient coffee they also do it's like sweet Thai sodas and uh, cocoa and stuff like that so yeah you can get a few different things in here you can also get a variety of different stir fried dishes Tam Sang they've got a load of noodle dishes there's a fried rice shop in here as well which I'm not sure if they're all related or not I have to ask him but you can get a few different things in here I'm just here for the roti today but I may come back if you want me to All right guys, onto the beef, and as you can see, B-roll wise, it just looks exactly the same. Let's see if we can differentiate. So the same, turmeric, those fried up onions, can't see any spring onion in this one. It's a minced beef, and like all minced beef in Thailand, this actually just looks like pork. Right, there's a the spring onion. We will try it. A rope piece of sweet corn. I'm not sure that's meant to be in there. I think that might have come from the, the vegetarian one because they actually have, they got, I think that might have come from the vegetarian one because they've got potato ones, they've got one that says grain, which I'm guessing is gonna be like a legume, probably like a dal, something like that. And then they have beef, fish, prawns, crab, mixed seafood, fish, all sorts. So I just went safe with my usual ones and got some crispy beef and chicken. The beef has surprised me because in the one that I usually go to, the one that used to be called just Muslim restaurant in Bangrak, I can't distinguish really between the beef and the chicken that much. Whereas this, I actually can. We've got some hand minced pieces of beef. They're tender enough, they've still got a bit of bite to them. So they've got a lot, a lot of flavour. I'm not sure what cut this is. Never know what cut I'm eating in Thailand unless it's a shin. But very, very flavoursome. And when he's pounded it up, I'm guessing with a cleaver, it's actually pretty tender as well. I'm sure if we ate it as a steak, it wouldn't be tender, but nice. Oh All right, that was highly recommended, guys, uh, especially for anyone that doesn't eat pork. It can be a problem around here. Sorry, God. It can be a problem around here, especially over Wang Lang and the Tombari side. Um, in Wang Lang Market, there's a lot of pork, put it that way. Even the seafood's cooked in pork fat over there. So um, if you don't eat pork for any reason, religious or otherwise, can highly recommend Roti Mataba Tapachan. Lung Lan, 
What a legend, mate. What a legend. 80 years of knowledge. This is looking like a pretty famous... All right, this is looking like a pretty popular ice cream stall. Let's take a look. There's food everywhere here. I'll take you for a little walk around and show you exactly what you can get in this area. As I said before, Grand Palace just up the road. So a lot of people asking me, where do I eat near the Grand Palace? This is your spot. Oh, it's not ice cream, it's uh, cow pod. Cow pod. Buttered corn with a little bit of, ooh. Nom mei wan, Nom mei wan. Nom jud. So it's just plain evaporated milk. Same as you would put into like a tom yum or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> So this is a dish guys, Kwe Jab Nam Khon. And it's, this is a dish I've never ever had a bad one. So you've got all the different pieces of pork. Mm -hmm. This is a... Jie... Huh? Lunch here, Lina? Jie Sim. Jie Sim. Papa Chan. Papa Chan, Jie Sim. Okay. Come and see Jie Sim. I'll come back if you guys want me to. Crispy pork looking unbelievable. You've got all the organs. You've got that herbal Chinese soup. I think this is a good one, guys. And then obviously no student student gaff would be complete without some dodgy hot dogs on sticks. Um, what else have we got? Oh, fried chicken or fried pork, K pod, pulled hard. One of my favourite breakfasts, K Jiao. One of the best breakfasts, one of the cheapest breakfasts. We've got Khao Tong. She's got everything down here. All right, so as you can see, food galore down here. Now, I'm not going to tell you this is like the best street food in Bangkok. As I said before, it's cheap and cheerful, mainly for the university students and the local workers. But there is some decent food to be found here, as I showed you. Also, I can't believe I had a coffee on the way over at Wang Lang because there is a speciality coffee shop that I really wanted to try. Um, it's highly, highly rated called Lua. But that's going to have to wait until my next trip over here because if I have another coffee now, I think I'm going to have a heart attack. So I'm going to go back into the market now and I want to show you the rest of the food market because it is pretty extensive. That goes all the way back into the amulet market. So I'll show you all that um, and then we'll call it a day. I might grab one more thing to eat. I'm not sure yet. Let's go. So like I said, absolutely packed with the students. So many restaurants here. We've got Khao Khao Mall. How do you go? Uh, we've got a load of riverside restaurants always busy busy most of them are just like tam sang restaurants what do you have need aloe mai aloe na kap absolutely packed a lot of them So like I say, restaurants everywhere, food everywhere. A little bit too busy for me at lunchtime of all these students about. Those students just assured me that it's all Arroyo Mac. I'll quickly show you some of these amulets. I don't know anything about amulets, so I'm not really sure um, what they're all about. If anyone can give me some information in the comment section below, much appreciated. Right, so this guy clearly knows more about amulets than I do. What do you have? Any Dima? Dina. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's absolutely massive, this market. Full of antiques and amulets. And I actually don't really know what's going on here. So what I think I'll do is I think I'll do some research guys, I'll come back. I might do a live stream here, or I might just come back and do another video. Let me know in the comment section below what you'd like me to do. Thank you so much for joining me today on my little impromptu video. I wasn't even meant to do a video today, um, but I'm glad I did, and I hope you're glad I did too. Thank you very much everyone 
that has been supporting the videos financially and to everyone that has just been sharing and liking and just spreading the message. Thank you so much and I will see you in the next one.